What's up, YouTube? Welcome to another episode of the Undergrad Forum. Now, I've been making some videos here because I'm thinking to myself, I just graduated med school last week, I'm starting residency in a week, and I'm taking this time to think back over the five years of med school. Uh, it took me five, not four, because I got an MBA with my MD. And I'm thinking, what kind of stuff would I wanted to tell people um, now that I have the hindsight to help them through med school and to make them more efficient, have more fun, and be successful. Um, so I did make a video. If it's not here in the section, it's probably going to come up after this video, which is what are four techniques for studying that I think all med students should implement to make their studying more efficient um, and useful and kind of get much more of a memory pull from it. Um, the reason I made that video, I talked about four topics. Um, it was space repetition, interlacing your learning, learning from exams, and making associations. Um, the details of all those four are in that video because that's what I think made me at some point, you know, in, in the beginning of med school, I wasn't really sure what I was doing in the very beginning. And then as time went on, you talk to other people, you talk to upperclassmen, you learn your own skills, and I kind of tried boiling it down um, and thinking, what were the, some of the key takeaways about what made me a better learner and faster? And I think those are the four. So watch that video. But now the other question I'm thinking about is, okay, so, but how do you do well in med school overall? What's the big picture? I've made videos about how to do well in anatomy, in physio, on step one, on step two. But what about the big picture idea? It's hard to keep all your resources kind of organized. Um, I have given you links to like, you know, over the, over the course of various videos of really high yield topics and good books that I like. Um, but you kind of need a general scheme, I think. Um, and I never really shared this in any of the videos because I never really thought to do so. So here we go. It's at the end of med school, but still I gotta share it now. And that I think is like, you need some kind of backup to your school. So every school has total, you know, great points to them and some flaws to them as well. You can take a judge for yourself as to what your school is good at and what your school is not good at. Um, and my school is good at a lot of things, but it also was, and it had weaknesses in other sections of learning. And what I realized is there's like four things that you want, again, the four, I don't know, you know, four things to learning, four things you want in good medical education, and that's you want good lectures, number one. You want good notes to go with your lectures, number two. You want recall questions to teach you how to quiz yourself on what you're learning, and you want good board questions. Um, and that's, I think, where I want to kind of give you guys some insight, because as much as people want to think, I don't want lectures, I can figure it out myself, I'm going to very politely and in a not humble and biased way say, I think you need lectures. Because um, when you're learning something new for the very first time, it's hard to read a book and just raw go into it. You want to read the books, get like a general understanding of it, go to lecture, have someone who has a much more complex understanding of it, give it to you, and then you can read more and get a grasp of it uh, much better. And that's why I think people need lectures. Um, in my med school, there were people who didn't attend the lectures and kind of watched lectures from home, whether they were recorded from our school or purchased from a third party. Um, and that's because I think people just realize they want lectures because they want someone to break down hardcore material at, you know, at some fundamental base that you can then take and build up and learn better yourself. Um, so lectures, you want you know lecture notes to go with them, and you want recall questions. Um, there's different companies that can do it. Um, I use two, so you can use a company called Lecturio. Uh, it's like lecture, but ends in I-O, like Lecturio. I think they're based out of Germany. There's uh, Kaplan, which is Kaplan Medical. Um, I don't know where they're based out of. And there's also Pathoma in UWorld. And I think you can use these in different varieties. These are the big four that I'm familiar with, um, and I have experience with all of them, and so I want to give you guys a sense of what I think they're good for and what you can use where to give you like an unbiased view of good things. Um, so when it comes to lectures and when it comes to notes, your school is going to give them to you. And they're, if they're super amazing, lucky you. You know, you're doing great. Uh, but if they're not, or sometimes, you know, you'll have a lecture that's good and you'll have like, you know, say a microbiology lecture on bacteria or gram positives and that's great, but then your virus person teaching isn't the best. Um, it's nice to have like a backup system that has these four components to it, at least some of them, um, to kind of help yourself out through your medical training to not get stuck with learning poorly because someone didn't teach well and they put too much of a burden on you to learn. Um, so I use Lecturio videos for that. Um, you can just watch the videos. They're like high-end videos of people, like famous people who are attending, is giving you lectures, or they have PhDs on the topics. So it's pretty much like med school. Um, Kaplan does the same thing. Um, I chose Lecturio over Kaplan for the videos and for the notes, um, just because I felt like Kaplan was a little bit 
mildly outdated and kind of overpriced. Um, so I think that's a, probably the biggest point for me was the videos were okay, but they did seem a little bit old, like they hadn't been redone. Um, and the price point was tremendously high, which I don't know if that's just Kaplan thinking they're Kaplan, but either way, I couldn't afford that, nor did I really think I was paying, like my money was going to good use. So I used Lecturio, much lower price point um, with high yield content. Um, and that excited me because I felt like it was much more fair pricing, especially for med students who can't afford, you know, all, every, you, you can, you know, you got to spend money on learning, but you can't buy everything. Um, and Kaplan was just too much of a budget drain for me. So I thought Lecturio had the benefit of they have really good videos, um, taught by like high-end people, famous people giving you lectures, and it's very clean and updated. I'll give them that. Like that I liked a lot because I felt like the material was up to date, it was high yield, and it was relevant. Um, and they had very clean notes with it. That's very important to me. Um, when I, my, one of my friends did Kaplan and I saw the workbook he had um, looked, looked like a hot mess. <laughs> no offense to Kaplan, but it, you know, it just wasn't for me. Um, you gotta make that judgment call for yourself. Go talk to your friends, see if anyone's already purchased anything. Talk to upperclassmen, see if you can look at their material before you pick one for yourself. Because getting these kind of investments into getting into some background company that's gonna be giving you lectures and notes and questions in addition to your med school is an investment. Um, it's not crazy money, but it's still an investment and you wanna pick wisely. So for the videos and for the notes, I went with Lecturio. I just thought they were really good videos, high, high, what are they like high yield, focused. Uh, the notes were very clean. I think that's what probably attracted me a lot was the notes were there to accompany the videos, not just drown you with memorizing more and making you feel like, how am I gonna learn all this? Um, so that was a total benefit to me. Um, and then comes recall questions. Um, so Kaplan doesn't have any, which kind of annoyed me. There are companies like Firecracker, formerly called Gunner Training, um, I think first state as a QBank that's like this, that's supposed to help you learn content. Um, Firecracker does it well, but the problem was I was learning from Lecturio and I didn't want to switch over to another learning platform that had different things. So I stuck with Lecturio because it kind of came in a package where like you get videos and questions all like when you buy it, um, you get you get access to the whole thing online. And that's what I liked because I was learning from the videos, I was taking notes, I was trying to space out my learning, I was trying to watch the videos in different interlaced order. And then you want some kind of questions to question, you know, to test you because that goes to the back those four things I said that help you learn well, and that's you want to watch videos, you want to space out your learning so you're not cramming, but you also want to have recall questions that are teaching you, are you learning well or what do you not know or have deficiencies in? And that's the beauty. I thought it was pretty cool that Lecterio had that built in, um, and it was all part of one platform, so that I liked a lot. And Lecturio also does have USMLE questions, which I thought was just an added benefit. Um, so that was the reason I went with Lecturio over Kaplan. Um, they were just a nice background thing for me. I got to watch all the videos, I got to do the questions, I got to do the recall, I had the notes, and that was like a nice background package that just um, supplemented, I guess, my med school education. Um, for specific classes, I did also bring on specific other courses. Um, for pathology, I've talked about it in the past, I did use Pathoma. One book, um, again, a series of videos, a series of notes, um, no questions on that one. So I actually just used like Trio's questions for Pathoma. But Pathoma was so widely spoken of, I didn't mind. I just went and bought that one in addition to it. So that was like my strategy. And then for U World Time, I did our, I had already done the Lecturio question, so that was easy. Um, and then I just tacked on that big U World and worked through all those questions to emulate the real exam. Um, and I did not use Kaplan QBank. Uh, I ta I've talked about it why in other videos. I just think they're not like the real QBank, so didn't like it. Felt like it was too outdated, too basic science. Um, and I didn't use the first aid one because I felt like it just kept trying to pull me to first aid instead of me just reading it on my own. So I hope this video has helped, guys. I've given you a you know a bit of a taste into my other video about the four things of learning, um, you know, doing questions, spacing your learning out, mixing them up and interlacing, um, and also associations. And three of those four things we've talked about in this video while talking about a strategy of having supplementation to your entire medical school, and that's I use Lecturio, which was this kind of video platform with lectures. Uh, with notes, with questions, and with QBank questions for USMLE, um, and I tacked on UWorld and Pathoma for those to kind of give myself a full training. Uh, links down below for all the stuff we've been talking about, for Lecturio, for UWorld, for Pathoma. Hope you guys like this video. Uh, put any questions you have down below. Um, post any questions on our Facebook group. We have a community where we can help each other out. Um, and as always, guys, enjoy your studies.